Hello, everybody. Welcome to the HILI channel here on Going Local TV. I'm your host, Melissa Farrell, and today's podcast is all about the Women's Leadership Conference. I'm joined by two very special guests. We have the president and CEO of HILI, Terry Elise Maselli. Welcome back, Terry. How are you? Thank you. Excited to be here. Always love having you. I have a new guest in the studio, president and CEO of Discover Long Island, Kristen Reynolds. How are you, Kristen? I'm doing great. Thank you. So excited to have you guys here today. This topic is amazing. Let's get started. But first, I want to know, before anybody we get started, what is the HILI's mission, just so people who haven't seen the show yet? Sure. I mean, we're one of the recognized voices for Long Island Business, a powerful force in regional and economic development. You know, we represent all of Long Island, but we advocate for the Long Island Innovation Park at Hopog. And we did another episode on that. And um, it's a major economic engine, 55,000 employees, 1,300 companies, an economic output of 1.3 billion. 13, oh, 13, 13 billion. billion 13 billion. So we do a lot of work um, in the park, inside and outside the park as well. I love that. All right, Kristen, Discover Long Island. Tell me all about that and how it helps our Long Island economy. Right. So Discover Long Island, we're officially the tourism promotion agency, but really what we are is the brand of Long Island um, because there's nobody else out there that is promoting Long Island positively except for us, and we're happy to do it. Um, So tourism, when we we brand Long Island, it brings in visitors. Tourism is a $6.6 billion industry on Long Island. We just broke a record. Yes. Um, But honestly... You know, have to think about it. it's not just visitors when they hear the brand that Long Island is a wonderful place to be. It really does impact um, people moving here, business. And no one moves their business or relocates relo- lo- to a, another place until they visit it there. It all starts with a visit, right? And yep. so, but before you visit there, you want to know that it's a good brand and some place that is positive and welcoming and all the things we have to see and do. So we spend a lot of time creating content and promoting the destination of Long Island. I love that. All right, Terry. How did the Women's Conference, Leadership Conference, begin? Was it a certain person? Was it a certain incident? How did it all start? Yeah, I mean, it, it started 14 years ago. So Senator Kirsten Gildebrand at that point did a Women's Roundtable at one of our board members, Angela Bunker Moore, her location. And uh, many of us got around the table and began to talk about, you know, like life-work balance and gender gap, you know, and gender equality and things like that. And... Um, you know, she really inspired us to do something, to start something, but more importantly, to continue to do something to keep that dialogue alive. I mean, from the HIALI standpoint, we began to work actively then with Governor Cuomo on the woman's agenda and did many other things in that in that area. I mean, I think this conference, conference represents... Um, the dialogue that needs to continue. I think I mentioned to you before, before we got on air, we have a lot of young women that come to the conference. Um, Last year and prior years, it was remarkable. They would reach back out to us and they would say, wow, wow, I'm in a situation where this is going on and I thought I was the only one or, um, or, um, inspired. I'm inspired yeah. by what I can be and what I'm working towards. So it's really important for us, really important for us. I love this. All right, so today's program starts with a sneak peek into the 13th Annual Women's Leadership Conference, and it's titled Women Leading the Way. Now, what can attendees expect from this conference? And what's the importance of these events? So we're doing some different things this year. Okay. Real excited. We got together a, a woman's task force that Kristen is is very involved in. Um, we've reached out to all the attendees and we've asked them to send us back either a motivational quote or uh, the best piece of advice they've ever gotten. I and that. I just checked yesterday. I was shocked that most most of them, uh, men and women, Ooh. obviously. Um, um, sent back some wonderful things. So I'm not going to tell you what they say, on, but Terry, when, when we open, we'll, we'll talk about some of them and, and what they mean to people. Then we're, we'll have a panel right off the bat. Kristen is one of the executives that is on it. We have Angela Bunker Moore, who's the CEO of uh, GSE Dynamics and um, a, a manufacturing firm. We have two other CEOs that are from technology companies and then a CEO from a nonprofit organization. So very well-rounded group. And I and I also mentioned that Dominique uh, Camacho Moran, who's with Farrell Fritz, really works hard at making everybody feel comfortable. So we can really have a deep conversation. And get real. Yeah. I love this. We have breakout sessions. So we'll be talking about work-life balance and mentoring and self-confidence. So there's... 
um, there's a lot for all. And all things that we all need women. Yep. 100%. Yep. All right, Kristen, you're up. You ready for this? I think so. I don't know. You got this. You got <laughs> this. All right. What initiatives or strategies have you found to be most effective in falsely female entrepreneurship? And secondly, how can more women be encouraged to start their own business? Yeah. Well, and it's funny. Tourism industry, people think a lot of times of the big brands, you know, the Marriott's or the big restaurants. But really, it, we're more than 80% small business. And there's a lot of women-owned businesses in mm-hmm. my industry. I mean, Little Ram Oysters on the North Fork and the uh, candle makers or people that make their cupcakes. Um, All of those things are related to entrepreneurship and women. And I think that a lot of the things we're going to talk about at the conference will help guide this process. For example, Terry just mentioned confidence. Having the confidence in yourself that you can achieve your dreams and that you can be successful. And then building your network, knowing who to go to, who to turn to, who do you need in times of sometimes just encouragement. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Just a shoulder. Yep. Um, And having that network of people that you know are there to support you and guide you and and, and, um, and guide you towards resources that you need. Understanding the resources that are available. I think there are so many resources out there for businesses big and small yep. that go untapped. Yep. And so I think all of those things will play into it. But again, this is these are the kinds of the foundational things that we're talking about today uh, all lead into success in whatever kind of business role that you are embarking upon. Great answer. <laughs> Thank two you. points. You got two, too. Don't <laughs> two worry. You're both doing good. <laughs> well, we're all right, being Kristen, graded. You're up again. No pressure. Oh, okay. No okay. pressure at all. All right. In your experiences, what challenges do women face trying to balance professional responsibilities and personal life? And what solutions can organizations implement to help them? Well, you know, I, I'm the CEO of an organization, and I have been for eight years, and we are primarily women uh, in my organization, and, and not necessarily by design. That's just the way it happens. Um, but I will say my personal experience of that question is that women can oftentimes be our own worst enemies um, in that in that case like we were just talking about it earlier that understanding how to prioritize um, how to prioritize business when you need to uh, even though you might have a sick kid at home you know you have to figure out a way to get to that meeting that you can't miss yeah. or under understanding how to prioritize yourself yeah. when you need to and making sure that you have that downtime or that you know what if something is happening in your family and maybe that meeting or that dinner can be missed <laughs> you know yeah. and understanding those times but Honestly, also putting expectations that are unrealistic on ourselves. Mm -hmm. Um, The mom guilt is real. And I think um, even in this day and age, I see it so many times with my staff, no matter uh, how successful they are compared to their spouse, the women will take on that role of sacrifice. Yep. Um, It's just maybe in our DNA. I don't know. But I think oftentimes it's we're our own worst enemies and we have to just sometimes put our foot down you know, for for our companies and for our home life and for ourselves. I see women constantly. I don't have children. And I have a busy, busy life. I don't know how I get there. I don't stay alive myself. And look at women. I'm like, how are you keeping children alive? On yeah. everything else that we have to do. Like, how? what is the secret here? But I just want to tell everybody out there, I have such envy for women who work and are moms. I don't know how you all do it, but Ma, you have my vote in anything you need in life. <laughs> All right, Terry, can you share experiences or stories with women who have been successfully navigated through corporate hierarchies? Any success stories you want to share with us? Sure. I mean, there there's a bunch of examples of women, I think, just in general, who have kind of crashed through a glass ceiling, right, and those hierarchies. Um, you know, personally, I was very fortunate um, to be surrounded by very strong women in my life. Yeah. So my grandmother one day woke up, didn't drive, decided she wanted to work, literally called a taxi, got a job. I don't just like that. It I happened. love her. Um, my cousin, older cousin, was the first female in New York City at the time to uh, work in the construction field and became a super on the Varazano Bridge, Stop literally it. physically on the bridge, right? So I've seen a lot of examples of it personally, but I think equally as important, our members show us a lot of examples, mm-hmm. right? So somebody once said to me very early on in my career, um, Speak your truth even if your voice is shaky. I thought, wow, that's cool, right? Like Speak that. your truth yeah. even if your uh, voice is shaky. Um, and our ability to be able to look in a mirror and say, gee, I like what I see, but more importantly, look beyond the mirror in our soul and say, I love what I see. Yeah. Like, I love that I have that self confidence I bring to it is really how women, I believe, uh, crash through a glass ceiling. It's, um, you know, be, be a ultimate professional. 
Um, don't think of yourself as a female or a male. Be a professional yes. as you walk in. Understand your profit and loss statements. Understand the balance sheet if you're a CEO, you know, and all those things. So um, I think there were just many women who have paved the way for us. And I think that's one of the things that this conference does is really shows people that um, there are women that um, can kind of lift us up, right? Yes. Which is what needs to happen. Great answer. You're getting points for that one, too. I'm just saying. <laughs> All right, Kristen, why is it important for businesses to prioritize diversity and inclusion? And what policies or practices have you seen that effectively support women from various backgrounds? Right. Well, I think having um, voices that don't think like you are important, right? Because 100%. that's how <laughs> having diversified thought processes uh, and listening to those different voices, that's how you grow outside of your own comfort zone, outside yep. of your own knowledge base. Um, I mean, again, for tourism, it's it's critical because we want to be the most welcoming. We want to welcome everyone, right? That's what makes us successful. And in order to be diversified, you have to show people that that they're welcome in your destination, right? Exactly. You have to show them that they're going to be there. Um, but internally, that's an external, more of a branding situation. But internally, I think that um, it's really important. And, and diverse, you know, diversity means different things to different people. But really, it could be age diversity. Um, and it could be male and female and all walks of life and all ethnicities and religions. And I think right now with what the, you know, what we're facing in the world, there's, it's so important to listen to all sides yep. and to really understand where everyone's coming from, because that's how you'll communicate and to larger audiences. Okay, good, great answer. You guys are crushing this, just so you know. <laughs> All right, Terry, how do businesses benefit having women, women in leadership roles, and what could be done to cultivate and encourage leadership qualities among women in the workforce? So, you know, it's interesting. We just finished a workforce development survey that, yes. again, we spoke yep. a little bit about the last time we were here. And, you know, the, the results when they came out said several things. One is how absolutely critical in the workplace soft skills are. I don't know if they're soft, but our ability to critically think, our ability to problem solve, our ability to multitask, our ability to really rally people around in a team and make something happen really is where productivity happens, right, yep. in a uh, organization. So when I think about women, and it goes back, to, I, th I think, to what Kristen said before, is that we – typically take on the mother role, right? Yep. We, we're extremely nurturing most of the time at the risk of stereotyping. Um, we we can cut through it all. We really can yep. cut through it all. We're action oriented. Yep. So I think, wow, there's, a, there's so much that women can bring to the table as leaders. Um, and it's so important for the future to be able to do that. I think companies who do that really well understand that anybody, male or female, they need to find a voice, right? Yep. And they need to encourage people to use that voice uh, no matter who they are. Yeah, I agree. All right, what strategies can be employed to encourage support women in pursuing traditional uh, careers in traditionally male-dominated industries? And can you share examples of successful integration? Hmm. Actually, I would say your cousin with the bridge. Right. I mean, that was that yeah. was the perfect answer. Say it again in case somebody watched. Gosh, if you ever met my cousin, <laughs> wow. She's a yeah. powerhouse. Um, you know, so... I remember going through that personally, right? As a CEO now of, of the HIALI, I'll be with them 20 years in uh, at the end of 2024. Thank you. Um, but, you know, when I first started, I walked into a situation, and even my prior life in training, and I was in strategic sales, it was very, very male-dominant. Yeah. Very male-dominant. And I go back to what I said before. I had a mentor, happened to be a male mentor, but who said to me, when you walk into a room – Always expect somebody to ask you to say something, number one. So yep. always prepare yourself. But number two, um, you know, don't look at yourself as a female or a male. Yeah. Just be a business professional yep. and understand if, again, you're a CEO of an organization, then it's your responsibility to engage team members. It's your responsibility to really understand from a profit and loss statement what this looks like and what you have to do dramatically different. And I just took that to heart. Yeah. So everything that I've done, any room I've walked into, it's never been about, oh my God, there's so many more males in here right. than females, or oh my God, I'm in a board meeting and I'm the only female. It just has never crossed my mind. That's amazing. Great advice. And by the way, I think it's because it it's because it's never crossed my mind that you'll speak to other women sometimes and they're in tough situations. Um, 
I, I really feel that it's important that we walk in like that so th- that we don't get in tough situations. And I don't mean to say it's their fault. No, don't misunderstand yeah. me. But we, we just, we, we we walk into it like that. Yeah. So it's no, no one questions it. It's, it's, like it's what you said about confidence, having your confidence right? and knowing who you are in this room and yeah. being that I am a professional in this room. Yeah. Not a woman. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, I, and again, I think it goes back, the second part of the question is it goes back to organizations that really understand and and DEI and, and really understand that it's really important to bring all different levels. The organizations that do it really well are organizations that reach out and understand that moms, there's an opportunity there and a talent pool to bring in somebody who has kids. Yep. Who wants to go back to work yep. or other organizations that are female based and they seek females out to yep. be able to come into their organization so they're very well rounded all right my next question is for both of you get on the hot seat are you ready how significant is the role of mentorship as you said in career growth of women and what advice would you give to someone looking to find or establish a supportive professional network well i'll start um and i just I wanted to kind of piggyback on what terry just said it, it, about breaking through male dominated industries and and finding your network. And and it's oftentimes the men that are more sometimes can be more supportive of women rising up than women are. Yeah. So walking into a room that are all men, it's not necessarily a bad thing because, um, and, and that, and so my, my plea would be to, you know, support other women if you are a woman in leadership and not to sometimes like sometimes women like being the only one. Um, so I, I really think that, you know, the more we find that network and you have to be careful, I feel, when you are seeking out that network, um, at least initially, you know, don't put all your cards on the table right away. You really have to make sure that the people you're confiding in about certain things are people that you can trust. Yep. And and I like to keep my network of people like that pretty small and yep. pretty tight. Yep. Um, but when you do establish them, man, what an incredible uh, group and resource that is mentally and yep. professionally, and um, and and keep make sure you you're you're reciprocating that trust and um, and feedback with them. That's great advice. Ditto. Did I say that? But she's right. I yeah. don't know. I feel very strongly. You know exactly what what Kristen said. Um, um, all of my males, actually, now that I think about it, yeah, have been right? have been um, mentors have been males um, and been extremely supportive. Actually, pushed me in directions that I didn't even in the beginning when I was very young didn't even think I was capable of. Um, you know, I think the other piece to mentorship is um, for me and for many of us. And, and Kristen and I have talked about this before. Every day is a learning day, right? So there is not a day that goes by that I don't learn something, good, bad, or indifferent. And I think it's really important. We have a responsibility as women to impart that if someone wants to be mentored and to really listen to what they need and why they need it and to share experiences we have been through so they understand they're not the only one going through it. So I think mentorship is critical. I find that people in general who don't necessarily um, believe in mentorship or don't have mentors struggle a lot more than people who do. 100%. But I also agree that you have to look at the right circle. Um, it's really critical to really understand who you're talking to and, and as Kristen said, who you can trust and that was good who advice. you might not be able to. So. When I first started my own business, I remember people were poaching me and they're trying to come for me to like, oh, come do this, we'll help you, we'll help you. And it was all the taking. There was no giving, it was all taking. And it took me a little bit to like sniff it out. And then after that, I was like, okay, guard up. I was like, I'm watching who I let in my circle now. So very good advice. All right, so this conference takes place Wednesday, November 15th. And how can people sign up or find information about it? Where can they register? Yeah, they can register right on our website. So it's hia-li.org. They can, old-fashioned way, they can call us. Oh, uh, we imagine phone? that. Oh, we have a Is phone. Um, 631-543-5355. Um, we have over 200 people registered, both nice. men and women yeah. registered at this point. And last year we had over 300, so I'm sure we will. We're very, very excited about it. It's gonna it. be a great conference. Thank you ladies for your time today. You were absolutely amazing and super inspiring. I admire both of you very much. I appreciate this. Make sure to get your ticket for the conference. Do not miss out on that. And tune into HILI channel for information. And we'll see you on our next podcast. Have a great day. Thanks for watching. Thank you.